Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in the Sarco Bites series. Those who know me on a personal level will know that I can often be rather opinionated on various political topics, but I've debated whether to voice them here on my channel. I finally decided to give it a try. So this video series will focus on my opinions on current topics, politics, religion and just general stupid things I tend to come across. So let's see what we're dealing with today. For those of you who don't know, Robot Wars was a hugely popular British television series that started in 1998 where competitors would bring their homemade fighting robots into a custom built arena to battle it out with other robots. Also in the arena were the terrifying house robots, the most destructive robots ever built. The series survived for 9 seasons before being cancelled. The cancellation was mainly down to it being moved to a different channel and time slot, making it harder to watch. The Robot Wars arena went silent and the fearsome house robots went into retirement for 12 whole years. Robot fighting continued in live events and in the states in the form of battle bots. Recently the Lad Bible started a petition asking for Robot Wars to be returned to TV. The request was heard. And last month, Robot Wars returned for a brand new series, featuring a bigger, better arena, more powerful competitor robots, and upgraded house robots. The mechanical mayhem has finally returned, and is being enjoyed by everyone. Well, almost everyone. You see, I've loved Robot Wars since I was a child. So when a feminist who works for the Telegraph comes along and throws insults at the audience and competitors of the show, I just can't stay silent. Now this review by Jasper Rees doesn't look so bad at first, till you actually read it. It was fun then and still is. As ever, it's relying on an indestructible formula. Geeky Mad Max wannabes play remote control bumper cars. At the risk of provoking petrolhead Twitter wrath, the motorized robots seem to be very much of a piece with the feisty little critters on wheels I remember from nearly 20 years back botched toad-like monstrosities, customised to flip, shunt, crudge, and crush. Okay. Hold up. As hilarious as that analogy, the whole Man Max analogy may be, it's also far off the mark. Many of the competitors are serious engineers, with Formula One simulator designers and rocket scientists among their ranks, and these robots are a bit more powerful than remote control bumper cars. The rear of Matilda has never been quite seen like this before, and I have to say, thank goodness Matilda is on fire! <laughs> Razor is destroying Matilda! There's the flame from Matilda, the tusks were raised, I think it was just the last sort of nervous spasm of Matilda! They're in major, major... <laughs> Matilda, what's happened to you? As for provoking petrol head wrath, I'm not sure what she's actually on about there, petrol heads are crazy about cars, not robots capable of destroying them. Her feminist angle really starts to show in the next couple paragraphs. Obviously it's a toy show for and about overgrown boys. There is much excitable talk of telemetry systems and infrared repair kits. The head judge is a professor with a ponytail. Again. Wouldn't refer to these powerful machines as toys. Because this is a really good battle in the making here. Oh, until that moment, surely. Hypnotis, look at the power. Scoop of atomic, there goes the weaponry. The front fort not just bent, the fort was knifed away into the distance somewhere. 
completely toothless now and very near the bit of doom. I jump in. I really would save yourselves. Look at that. Split apart Atomic 2. Jasper here tells me a lot about herself when she criticizes the head judge for having a ponytail. Professor Noel Sharkey isn't some silly professor. He's kind of a big deal. From Wikipedia. Sharkey held a chair in the Department of Computer Science from 1994 at the University of Sheffield, and then he was a professor of artificial intelligence and robotics and a professor of public engagement. He was supported by an EPSRC Senior Media Fellowship and the Leverholm Fellowship of the Ethics of Battlefield Robots. Previously, Sharkey held a number of interdisciplinary research and teaching positions in the US, Yale Computer Science and Stanford Psychology, Stanford Psychology, sorry, and the UK, Essex Language and Linguistics, Exeter Computer Science. He was director of the Centre for Cognitive Science at University of Essex and director of the Centre for, Con uh, for Connection Science at the University of Sheffield. He holds a doctorate in psychology, a doctorate in science, is a chartered electrical engineer, a chartered information technology, uh, technology professional, a fellow of the Institution of Engineering and Technology, a fellow of the British Computer Society, a fellow of the Royal Institution of Navigation, and a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts and Manufacturers. In 2014, Sharkey received an honorary doctorate in informatics from the University of Hvde, Sweden. Hoping I pronounced that correctly. But hey, he's just some professor with a ponytail, right? The next paragraph, however, really made me groan. Effects have been made to redress the balance. There is a female co-presenter and one of the three judges is a woman. But women have not yet achieved equality in the workshop. Last night, the teams with a female component showed that gender stereotypes were very much in play. Sarah, from Team PP3D, was aesthetics consultant, while Merle, from Team Storm, helps with the artwork. None had been trusted with a screwdriver. First of, there's always been a female co-presenter since the series' inception. Philippa Forrester, Julia Reed, and Jane Middlemiss. So this has never been an issue. As for the judges, although it's true that it has made major uh, the majority of the time been an all-male panel between 2000 and 2001, I believe that would have been the 5th and 6th series, or around that, or maybe the Extreme series, uh, there was also a female judge on the panel, Dr. Myra Wilson. Point is, again, nothing new. As for women not achieving equality in the workshop, they have. You see, this is a problem with third wave feminism. It focuses on equality of outcome instead of equality of opportunity. Women have an equal opportunity to be engineers and other things, but many aren't through their own personal choice. Choice being something the original feminist movement campaigned for. The ability for women to actually choose their path in life. But third wave feminism doesn't agree with that. They want women to be in STEM fields, they want them to be uh, the CEOs, and yet they don't actually seem to want to put in the work themselves, because they're all doing gender studies. But, to back up what I'm saying, here are some stats from a website dedicated to women in engineering. Only around 20% of A-level physics students are girls, and this has not changed in 25 years. There is now very little gender difference in take-up of and achievement in core STEM GCSE subjects. Women and men engineering and technology students express similar levels of intent to work in engineering and technology, but 66.2% of the men and 47.4% of the women uh, graduates in 2011 went on to work in engineering and technology. But in a survey of 300 female engineers, 84% were either happy or extremely happy with their career choice, and engineering students are second only to medics in securing full-time jobs and earning good salaries. 
I've selected these particular stats. Um, the link to the actual website will be in the description as with all my links uh, and references. But they are rather interesting, these stats. Uh, because although only 20% of A-level physics students are girls, it shows they're obviously in the classes. But to me, that shows that most just don't pick physics. Biology is a science more heavily dominated by women than men, for example. I should know. There is little difference between the sexes in core STEM subjects, which I would imagine is to be expected, really. Um, women aren't any smarter or stupider than men are. Everyone's an individual on average. And, you know, you'll always get exceptional individuals of either gender, as the same way you'll get rather dismal individuals of either gender. Um, one thing about the world, though, that needs to be understood is that you don't always end up in jobs that reflect your academic achievements. Uh, this can be down to a number of factors. It can be bad luck. Uh, you just can't seem to get a job in the field that you actually studied for. Uh, that can be down to economic factors, the global recession, uh, just things like that. Uh, maybe the employer that you're looking at really is just a bigot. You never know. Um, or sometimes it's just a case of that you've got qualifications uh, from university or college or whatever that put you in good stead to get a job, but the subject itself isn't actually something you particularly want to do with your life. Um, so, you know, you can end up doing other jobs that suit you better, um, or maybe you end up taking up a hobby as a job as well. Um, so, you know, these are factors and because of these factors there's really no oppression uh, there's no oppression in deviating from your studies um, but those who do want to become engineers thoroughly enjoy it and do well and that's because they want to do it you know so robot wars isn't promoting gender stereotypes more simply the interest lies mostly with the men of these teams and the women have far less interest in it. They probably have other hobbies. They're not interested in building a super powerful fighting robot. But as members of the family or as good friends, and given the fact that robot wars can be so fun, they're happy to join them. You know, this author, Jasper, she doesn't reference the fact that there are plenty of men on these teams that don't really seem to do a lot either. Uh, I've noticed that. There, you know, there tends to be like a couple key members and then the rest are just sort of doing frivolous work. Um, so, you know, it's more. I think it's more lack of interest is why you don't see them doing the engineering work. Even though indeed in one of the previews, for example, for Team PP3D, you did actually see um, one of the members... No, it wasn't PP3D, sorry. I think it was... Storm, actually? I can't remember which. It was either PP3D or Storm. Uh, you actually did see the female member of the team in the workshop, in the garage, um, grinding metal, crafting things uh, to build the robot with. Uh, you know, so... But here's the thing as well. This fact that, uh, you know, the teams are mostly male-dominated shouldn't really come as a surprise to the person who's already declared that Robot Wars is for and about overgrown boys. Jasper recognises that this is more of a man's thing, and yet in the same breath complains that there aren't women doing it. You can't have your cake and eat it. Either this is something that everyone can enjoy, or it's a thing mostly for boys. And if it's mostly for boys and men, you're going to find that in it, there are mostly boys and men. That's how these things work. Again, equality, diversity, doesn't mean you have to shoehorn 50% of the opposite gender into a thing. Top Gear, for example, functioned brilliantly without any female presenters whatsoever. And I mean the actual Top Gear, not that thing with uh, that Toad Evans and uh, Matt LeBlanc, or however you pronounce his bloody name. I mean the original Top Gear, you know, Clarkson, Hammond, May. That was the top gear that I was a fan of. Um, no female presenters, not necessary. Um, so, my final gripe with this review is the following paragraph. It's not a major thing, but I feel it, you know, I should point this out. 
uh, where she says, Team adoption were a more traditional outfit, a father and son in which the son, aged 17, was in charge of engineering and a bombastic trash talk. If anyone underestimates me, they're in for a shock, he told presenter Darrell Brain. Uh, this comes across as a bit mocking in tone. Uh, it might be out of ignorance, or it might just be because she's, you know, she's putting down a 17-year-old boy. Um, but his comment isn't bombastic. Though Michael Oates is only 17, his driving and experience has won team adoption various awards. Most notably, they were the UK FRA Fighting Robot Association champions in 2013 and 2014, while last year in 2015 they came second place. So he has every right to warn competitors not to underestimate him. In the remainder of the article, she puts in a good word about Jonathan Pierce because you just can't say anything against that man, frankly. Um, but she does end it with the notion that you have to be an overgrown boy or half drunk to enjoy robot wars. Personally, I think you just have to be a regular person to enjoy the carnage of mechanical mayhem of robot wars instead of looking for sexism in everything, especially where there isn't. Um, but, you know, I'm not being a rabid fanboy. There isn't, you know, because it isn't to say that the show isn't without fault. It does have its faults. It's just she didn't raise any of them in her review. Um, the main faults, uh, I find, are the lack of music. Uh, the lack of intimate camera angles from the old show, um, and the new point system means that you can't have the same level of destruction against the robots because they actually need to fight various times. Um, so all of that kind of adds a layer of almost documentary level dreariness to an otherwise exciting show. Um, but I'm not going to complain too much because right now I am just so glad that it's back. Uh, so I guess, in closing, my only hope so that Robot Wars continues to be popular so that we can enjoy it for many years to come, and that Jasper Reese finds Sir Killalot in her laundry basket. <laughs> <laughs>